Hey guys, this is Satyajit Patnaik and welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is going to be on data inside gathering on a medical related data set. So if you're looking out for some projects, data analysis or business analysis projects related to healthcare domain, this video is definitely for you. Now, just to make sure that this video is dedicated to one of my subscribers who had requested, sir, I need something in the healthcare related. He had commented on multiple videos of mine in my channel, of course. And from there itself, I started creating this use case so that I can deliver it to him. So his name is Nishi. I'm not pretty sure about his exact name, but I remember his name is Nishi. He's also one of my students at iNeurons Business Analytics course. Now let's get started. We'll talk about the use case. We'll talk about how did we analyze this use case. So let's get started. Talking about the use case, I am not pretty sure about from where did I scrape the data. I think it was from one of the Kaggle data sets. I don't know the original data set, but this is how the data set looks like. I have different patient IDs, appointment IDs, gender, schedule day, appointment day, age, neighborhood. So all these kind of features I have. And then I have a column called as no show. That means if it is no, that means the patient has not come on the appointment day or yes means the patient has come, something like that. So again, this is a classification related use case. If you are building a predictive model, then it's going to be a classification model. But as we are talking about the descriptive part, part the descriptive analytics part, so we are not concerned about the predictive model building. We shall be rather concerned about what the data is telling us. What can be the number of features or number of important information which can ex which can be extracted from this data set. So let's get started. So as I told you that EDA, if you haven't been through my EDA videos, I also have a dedicated two hours video on EDA. I think that basically covers a lot of topics and that's a very generic uh, video that I have on my channel. In case you are looking out for any kind of use case, let's say you are working on a business, uh, banking related or a telecom related use case, you can take ideas from that video and exactly use the same concepts in your data sets. Okay, I'm going to use the same concepts here. Now, if you don't know, this is how my data set, uh, this is how the EDA uh, file looks like in one of my EDA uh, videos. You can see this video is what I'm talking about, a detailed session on EDA. I will not be showing you this video, but okay, uh, it's it's. Uh, anyways, you can just check out this one, and this is the churn analysis EDA file. Okay, let's not talk about that in this video. You can go through that video, check it out. I think that should be okay. Let's get started with the healthcare related use cases. I also have very important Power BI related dashboards as well but today's video scope is just for the Pythonic part, the Python part of the EDA. So here I'm not going to run each and every line of code. I will leave this to you so that you can practice by yourself, but I will be covering each and every line step by step. Now, when you are doing EDAs, of course, in case of Python, you have to import your libraries, which is pretty much common. And then here I have read the data set. So, reading the data set and then i'm just printing the data set you can also print using head method or a tell method if you want to see the first five or ten records something like that patient id and appointment id these things are the primary keys or some kind of auto increment numbers right so normally we don't include these in analysis so we will be discarding this Let's say your data set has a customer ID or some ID, manager ID, ignore it because analyzing those columns that are auto increment columns doesn't make any sense. So data frame dot shape basically tells me how many rows do I have and how many columns do I have. Then comes your info method. Dot info, see pandas, numpy are one of the most user-friendly libraries to be very honest. So, 
each and every method is so explanatory it's so self you know you know just by knowing the name itself you will be able to understand what exactly it does info gives me an information about the data frame see i have a data frame this is the range index these are my columns these are my non null values now in this case i am getting like all the records are having values that means there is no non null values so what does that mean that means i don't have to do the missing value imputation again people who are looking out for how to do missing values imputation i will also come up with some complex data sets complex eda case studies so that you can go through that but for the time being let's go ahead with this data set here what i have done is you can see so you have heard about something called as derived matrix right derived matrix is something like you have a metric from that you are extracting something so i have scheduled date which is in this format it's in a date time format so mmmm sorry yyyy dd mm and then hh format so something like this right date time format what i am doing here is i am converting it to a date time format before that it's a object type you can see it's a object type i am converting the object type to a date time so i am running this and then i am running this you can see that con conversion has been done right now we don't need the hour months and those things so this has been done our next step is as this is medical data how can we utilize this method appointment day and scheduled day so what i thought is again you can use your own logic to be very honest everything is just trial and error what i did is i wanted to see can we get the week number can we get the day like is this a thursday is it a friday is it a weekend is it a weekday something like that so that's the reason i have converted the data into i have created new columns sch weekday so here i have taken the day of the week you can see here are my day of the weeks if you are not quite clear what is this method you can probably check out this one so day of week basically tells you if you pass a date it will give you which day it is where your zero means monday and six means sunday that means 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 days okay so it definitely means 5 is my saturday 5 is saturday and 6 is sunday okay to be okay now you can see these are the days that means i don't have anything for 6 that means there is no scheduled day for sunday for application day sorry for appointment day also there is nothing for sunday only for saturdays we have so what do we infer from this we infer that most of the appointments and the scheduling is happened between the weekdays not in the weekend again in the weekdays if you want to analyze you can see this is how the data looks like you can also plot a bar graph to understand for monday how much for tuesday you can see for monday tuesday and wednesday i can see the large number of values maximum for tuesdays right and again during the weekend is going to come on thursdays and fridays the numbers are decreasing that means there is a trend of increase during mondays to wednesday and then it is decreasing as simple as that then i am doing the dot columns where i am seeing the columns and then here i am just changing some names there are some spelling mistakes i'm just changing hypertension to hypertension handicap to handicap so that we can read it easily right no show to no show something like that and then again i'm printing the columns and again i'm doing the information so here you can see previously it was object type now we have date type okay then i'm dropping the patient id appointment id and neighborhood now why neighborhood when i started doing it i actually dropped these two columns and then i ran some methods and then i came back and then drop neighborhood i'll talk about neighborhood later on and then i have again done the information you can just ignore doing all these things again and again describe method as we already know that it explains the statistical information right as simple as a block plot a box plot box plot and a whisker plot gives you five measures right minimum maximum median 50, uh, 25 percentile and 75 percentile similarly 
your dot describe methods also gives you the output and it only gives you outputs for your numerical values it will not work for categorical values you can see for categorical and for date time values it's not there right here next step is i am plotting my target variable so what is my target variable my target variable is no show so i am trying to plot it so that i can see what is the distribution between the different variables that we have so for yes we have this much and for no we have this much what do we infer so for yes we have 20% and for no we have almost 80% so the inference is that it's a highly imbalanced data right and our focus is to analyze the minority class okay so here having a look at the data so this is one of the codes that i have written for finding the percentage of missing values you can as it is copy the code as it is because i have done the same from my previous notebook just copy paste it and just change your data frame name here and here simple okay then comes your missing value missing value data like initial intuition what is the initial intuition from this data here we don't have any missing data but the general thumb rules are if you have some missing values you have to impute using a regression technique or mean values or median values we will come up with some use cases where you can actually see how i am using regression to do prediction okay let's keep that for another video there it's not a part of this scope then comes your data cleaning where i'm just copy pasting my data frame to create a new data frame copy and then as we don't have any null values there is no data cleaning required very simple use case but definitely people who are looking out for writing something in the resumes you can use this and you can write down in your resumes especially freshers okay here i have age column now what is the maximum age that i have 115 what is the minimum age that i have of course i haven't printed it out but i know that the minimum age is around 11 or 10 okay now can we plot the age graph like if i start plotting it let's say i am plotting a bar graph so it looks like this right something like this and it will have from 10 till 115 so how clumsy it will be just imagine that so what i have done is from this numerical data i am converting into bins so that i can have from age 1 to 10 from 11 to 20 something like that and 60 plus something like that so here i have created bins for i in range of 1 to 118 within a bin of 20 that means 1 to 21 21 to 41 something like that now here i have done it and then exploration starts you can see this piece of code here for i in predictor in enumerate so what i am doing here is i am taking a value counts for each predictor what is each predictor each predictor is by each column of the data frame you can see it gives you the split of data appointment date zeros and ones scholarship zeros and ones so it gives you a complete idea about how the distribution of the data is then what i have done is i have converted my target variable to ones and zeros so i have just replaced it with zeros and ones and now we have same same data 80% and 20% then i am converting the data into get dummies now get dummies what is get dummies everybody knows about one hot encoding right so let's say you have some data like this you have city you have mumbai kolkata hyderabad can we directly in market as 0 1 2 no this is a wrong way of doing it label encoding doesn't work for independent variables it only works for dependent variables only works for target variables if we do this what happens is our machine learning algorithms or our statistical models give high priority to hyderabad so this is how it works so a good way of doing is let's say i have mumbai kolkata hyderabad mumbai city what i will do is i'll create three columns city underscore mumbai city underscore kolkata and city underscore hyderabad here 100010100101100 so we are converting data into zeros and ones if you are not quite clear about the different types of encoding i also have a video for that in my channel probably if i remember i will put that in the i section so that you can view it right away so 
I am using get dummies, which is a different way of doing like one hot encoding. Okay, you can see here, if I just see gender underscore F, gender underscore M, age group one, age group two, age group three. So for each, for each categorical variable, we are creating new columns. Okay, and then we will be dropping the old columns. I mean, automatically in get dummies, it drops, drops the original column. So let's say you have gender, it creates gender M, gender F, it drops the gender column. Okay. And then I'm just creating the correlation function and I'm plotting it. So you can see SMS received is highly correlated. Age group 21, 41 is highly correlated. Like as compared to other columns, it is highly correlated. Of course, the correlation value is very less. That means the data is, you know, we don't have very good predictors, but still, this is nothing but a correlation matrix, right? What is correlation matrix? Everybody should be aware of it, that correlation is always within the range of minus one to one. Where, what is correlation? Let's say I have two columns, numerical columns, height and weight. If your correlation value is near to one, 0 0.8, 0 0.6, that means height and weight are positively correlated. That means if height increases, weight is also increasing. If the value is near to minus one or towards minus one, then it is negatively correlated. That means if one variable increases, the other variable decreases. Any number near to zero means there is no correlation. That means both the columns are independent of each other. Of course, this value is not very high, but you can just assume it to be highly correlated because as comparing with the other columns, this is how one of the best predictor looks like in this particular use case. Same thing, I have just plotted a heat map. So same correlation function, I'm just plotting a heat map. You can see, oh, this one is, this is there is a simple uh, uh, difference between this one and that one. This one, the heat map is basically a full data frame correlation. That means each and every column is giving a correlation number with each other. Let's say age group 41 to 61 with respect to scholarship is somewhere around 0, 0.0. And this one is correlation with respect to no show. That means our target variable. So SMS received is highly correlated towards our target variable. Now, after our numerical analysis is done, then comes your categorical analysis. I hope everybody knows about bivariate, univariate and all those things. Univariate is simple. It's nothing but you are analyzing one column. That means male is to female. What is the ratio of male is to female on the original data? Let's say 50-50. What is the male and female ratio for the no-show data or the minority class? So let's say uh, 20 people and here 18 people. So somewhere nearby, right? If you see males are 100, females are 20. That means males are higher in number. So these are the intuitions which you can get. And next comes your bivariate analysis where I have created two different data frames. And here for no show zero, I have target zero. For no show one, I have target one. Okay. And then I have created a small plot. You can directly copy paste this code. To be very honest, don't go through this code line by line. Might be a little bit complex for beginners but you are free to understand it, okay. So here I'm calling the same plot and I'm getting all the distributions. You can see hypertension with respect to gender. So what is the intuition here? Hypertension with respect to gender for target one. So it's like for zero hypertension, you can say almost thousand records are there with for males and females, like males are higher in number. So this is the intuition which you can get from different graphs. Okay. And then you have to analyze each one of them, like for this particular age group and this particular age group, you can see here for 101 to 121. So I don't see any males here. So all the records are female records here for one to 21. I can see almost an equal ratio of male and female, but with 41 to 61 or 21 to 61, females are more in numbers, right? So this, this, these are the normal intuitions which you get. And that's the, that's the task of a data analyst and a business analyst. 
data analyst uses the different statistical analysis, categorical analysis, numerical analysis, all these things to find the intuitions. And business analyst basically takes the insights and try to create some presentations or some sort of data visualization dashboards or reports, something like that, so that it can be presented in front of your higher management. So that's it. You can see the findings here. Female patients have taken more appointments than male patients. Ratio of no show and show is almost equal for age group except age zero and age one. So you can see all these are our findings. I'm not sure if we can drastically see some good insights, but this is how it is. The methods, the way of dealing with the EDA has to be like this. So that's it from today's video, guys. I hope you learned something. In case you are not able to understand a lot about it, definitely, definitely the recommendation is that go through my end-to-end -end EDA playlist, like the EDA video, which is around two hours. You will get a lot of information from that. And I'm trying to keep this video short because I don't want to do another two hours of video. So this video is very specific to the healthcare part. And I will leave this uh, data and the file, all these things in the description below so that you can run it and do your analysis. And this is a go-to tool or a go-to code for resumes. If you are fresher, you can definitely add this in your resumes as well. Okay, that's it from my side, guys. I will come up with a lot of Power BI stuffs. Tableau is something which I'm targeting as well, but my immediate target is to finish the statistics part and the ED and Power BI part. That's it from my, my side, guys. Thank you. If you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want any sort of videos related to this, for example, if you are coming from a mechanical background or from other areas, let's say you want something into banking or insurance, let me know in the comment section below so that I can create a video for that as well. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.